Good evening and welcome to another study in the Word. This is our fourth week in studying um, the subject or the topic, Offense Destroys Your Destiny. And we're going to get straight into this teaching. So at this time, I'm going to ask my wife, Pastor Paulette, that she can open us up in prayer. Amen. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful to you again, Lord, that we can come into your presence. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for your many blessings in our lives. We thank you, Father, that, Lord, you have um, encouraged us in your word and um, assured us that, Lord, you have blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. And, Lord, we are so thankful to you this evening, God, that you've chosen us before the foundations of the earth, Lord, so that we should be blameless and righteous before you in your sight. And, Father, as we come to look at the topic of offense, Lord, this topic that has caused so much issue in the body of Christ, Father, we pray this evening that your Holy Spirit will be so present, Lord, Lord, not just to teach, but to convict and convince the hearts Lord, hearts that need to change. Father, hearts that need to humble themselves. We're praying this evening, Father, Lord, that they will not leave it another day, but that your Holy Spirit, Lord, will bring such conviction that, Lord, that they will humble themselves before you. Because, Father, you have called us for a time such as this, and our destinies are so critical to the age that you've allowed us to be born. So, Father, we are praying for destinies tonight, destinies that are hanging in the balance. Lord, because of the sin and the spirit of offense. And we pray that your Holy Spirit will have all um, authority and dominion this evening. Lord, as he teaches your people your word this evening. We give you thanks and we look to you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And so welcome to all our viewers, wherever you're joining us from. Uh, we pray tonight that God would truly bless you and, um, and open up your understanding um, even further uh, in this topic. So uh, this is the fourth week that um, we've been uh, looking at this subject, Offense Destroys uh, Your Destiny. And uh, one or two notes that I want us to take um, uh, to come back to our remembrance concerning uh, this uh, word offense. Uh, we must remember that uh, offense, the sin of offense, it becomes a sin when we do not deal with it according to Bible. In other words, it becomes a sin when offense uh, that we all do suffer, we all experience offense, but when we do not deal with it according to the Bible. In other words, we, um, we, we, we allow it uh, to, to take root in our heart mm. and, and it moves into another area of unforgiveness, bitterness, resentment, uh, uh, hatred and it just goes on and on and that's where the, uh, the, the sin is when offense now develops into something else it opens a spiritual door of unforgiveness animosity we begin to resent the person or the persons that has offended us because offense brings hurt our feelings are hurt and before we take it uh, to the cross we bottle it up on the inside and we don't uh, see it as offense or we don't see it as a sin and so we justify ourselves uh, of harboring that hurt harboring that uh, resentment not talking to that brother not talking to that sister in the church or, or family member and, and, and uh, we just have a total a disdain or dislike for that person. Now, if you are a Christian and really this is really targeted at the Christian, we know there are non-Christians that are watching this as well, uh, 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 but um, if you are a Christian and your, the offense of the offender has hurt you and um, and, and, and as a result of that, you begin to dislike that person. You begin to resent that person. You can no longer stand that person. You must understand that these things I just mentioned are unfruitful works of darkness, yes. which is sin. And the reason why 
I think I must have mentioned this two weeks ago, many Christians do not deal with offense and, and they allow it to take root. It's because they can't see it being a sin. Mm. And when we looked at the word offense, I wonder the word is a trap. A trap is a, or a snare. So a trap uh, takes a bit of time to set up, to okay. catch you, for you to be caught. And so we're talking about the powers of darkness. We're talking about demonic manipulations over people to hurt us. And then the enemy will try and uh, ratch that up in our lives, um, amplify that in our lives, bring back the words or the behavior that person uh, behaved towards us uh, like a scratch record in our heads. And, um, and all of a sudden, it begins to take root in our lives. Instead of we going to the cross, going to Christ, yes. bringing that to the Lord, and it would mean also us even um, speaking to the offender. Now, what I want to say about this when uh, we know we have to uh, address the person who has offended us, um, do not reply in a knee-jerk reaction. In other words, I'm going to go over to that person and let them know how much they, they have hurt me. As a Christian, if, uh, you've got to pray on it and ask God for grace. So you do not go over in a spirit of anger and resentment mm -hmm. yourself. And, and, and then the whole thing just blows up. And, and, and it just becomes just uh, uh, so bad that um, it, it just takes root in hatred and, and bitterness and, 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 and anger. And as a Christian, as a Christian, uh, uh, when these things happen in our lives, when these spiritual doors of, of of anger and rage against that person who is a, a Christian yes. who Jesus Christ shed and bled for and died for and although that was the offender and we were on the receiving end of that still for us who were the innocent ones there is a biblical scriptural godly way to deal with it and, and, and so sadly, in the body of Christ, many, many Christians have not dealt with offense the scriptural way. And, and they just brush it aside. I'm not talking to that sister. I'm not talking to that brother. And, 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 and we, we develop animosity in our hearts uh, against that person. They're going to the same church we are going to, but we're making sure on a Sunday morning or whenever we gather that we avoid that person like the plague. How could you be doing this and say you're going to heaven? And so it, it, it's knowing how to therefore deal with this. And as I said, we've got to go before God. We are hurt, we are human beings, we have an emotion, we have a soul, a mind, a will, and the emotion and these errors uh, get damaged at times, yeah. get wounded at times. And so we have to go to the Lord and, and we have to just spew out everything to him. Let him know how angry we are. Be real. Keep it real. Don't be in denial. Uh, um, and, and, and ask God for healing. And, 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 and at a time when you are led by the Holy Spirit, uh, to go to that person uh, in the spirit of Christ. In the spirit of Christ. And let that person know your behavior or what you said, what you did how you responded um, uh, really hurt my feelings, but I just want to say um, uh, um, I forgive you um, uh, for that. Now, if, if the offender does not receive um, uh, uh, your, uh, your address, um, just leave that with God. Yeah. As long as you have done what the scripture says, if you come to, the, uh, to give a gift and you remember, well, that someone has hold against you, that's another thing, someone has all against you, then you leave your gift and go make it right. But if you have been offended, um, and, and you know according to the Bible, uh, because you've gone to the Lord and now you, you sense the Holy Spirit says, now go and speak to that person. Now, it doesn't matter if, 
he or she does not receive that. Uh, don't allow that person to manipulate you, okay? I don't know what you're talking about. And, and all this kind of stuff. Because remember, Satan is the one who set up the trap. And Satan is the one that does not want you to deal with offense according to the Bible. Remember, um, I mentioned that uh, offense is one of Satan's greatest weapons in his arsenal. It has destroyed so many uh, Christian destinies. It has blocked their relationship with God. It has hindered blessings of God from coming into their lives. It's one of his major weapons that he always uses again and again and again and again. And so we mentioned that uh, uh, the greatest prescription that we can use to deal with that is the love of God, is to ask the Lord uh, to pour his love in our hearts, to help us to see people the way that he sees people. And then we will begin to pray for the one causing the offense because they are, uh, uh, if they are aware and they're doing it deliberately, they are under manipulation by the powers of darkness. But it's to rope you in, it's to get you bitter, it's to get you resentful, it's to get you upset, get you mad and enraged. And we've got to watch these emotions because when it becomes negative, then it becomes ungodly and we do not behave in a godly way. And so we always want to make sure that we, we have the fruit of the Holy Spirit, Galatians chapter 5, operating through us. And we go to God who has provided grace. God has provided grace for every offense that uh, uh, we would receive. And provided that grace for us to be healed, for us to be restored. And then God will give, us, give, give you wisdom how to deal with that and how to deal with that person. If that person is a, a person who's a Christian, uh, going to the same local church, or it could be a family member. And it's even worse when it's a family member. Uh, um, and we just think that we have the right to hate them or uh, not speaking to you anymore. And we just have them in our hearts. And that family member may not even be a Christian. And you are a Christian. So obviously you're not going to be praying for them anymore. I don't know if you notice that when you are praying for someone that you love dearly, that all of a sudden they do something to hurt you. You know that's set up by Lucifer? That is actually set up by the powers of darkness. You are praying for someone, maybe a family member, to be saved. And you're earnestly praying for that person. And then something happens, you, you're in conversation with that person, and that person all of a sudden says something, perhaps about your Christianity, about your faith, that offends you. And the enemy now jumps on that and tries to amplify that in our lives. And guess what happened? You stop praying because you, have, you are hurt. And that hurt has gone into resentment. And then the enemy succeeds. Offense is a trap. Offense is a snare to put you in bondage and to block the blessings of God, which in turn would end up destroying the destiny that God has for your life. You must face it head on. You must declare war on the devil's war of offense. If you have been harboring offense in your life for a good number of years now, the Holy Spirit is addressing you. Deal with it because you are opening a can of worms of demons to oppress you and to torment you. And that's what it will do because you, you have unforgiveness against that person. And unforgiveness is a sin. Resentment is a sin. Mm. Bitterness is a sin. Hatred is a sin. And holding on to offense is a sin. And we must see it as a sin. Mm. And the enemy has managed to blind so many Christians that we don't see it as a sin. So we just continue. And then he has legal right to block healing, to block many different blessings. Misfortunes are happening in your life and you don't know wonder why. Because the enemy has blinded your mind concerning the offense. But I believe if you're watching um, this uh, streaming and uh, the Holy Spirit is, is uh, revealing and alerting you and making you aware uh, of a 
offence that you perhaps are holding on to mm. or you have caused someone and, and because of the pride in you, you don't want to deal with it. Pride comes before a fall. There's a fall. There's a crash coming. Mm. If one does not humble themselves, a crash, a disaster. And that's what God wants you to avoid. It will give the enemy legal, legal rights because you are bearing one of his unfruitful works of darkness. It's a luxury that we cannot afford to have in our lives. Uh, uh, so uh, let's humble ourselves. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and the Lord will lift you up in due season. And that season could be right now. Yes. We could be in that season. Please don't, don't miss your season of blessing. Don't miss your season of breakthrough. Don't miss that season of opportunity that God wants to bless your life. But because of pride in our hearts, we don't want to climb down. We don't want to deal with it according to the Bible. Well, you don't know what he done. You don't know what she done. Well, I don't have to know what they've done. But I know what Christ did for us. 2,000 years ago on the cross that he bore every offense. He bore it in his body on the tree. Therefore, he has made provision then for whatever level of offense you have suffered. Think about it. Whatever level of offense you have suffered in your life, Jesus Christ bore it on the cross and he has provided grace so that you can be healed, restored, delivered, set mm -hmm. free. It's there. One must humble themselves. So if you've hold, been holding on to offense, you must repent. You must repent of it. Although it wasn't your fault. Yes. But if you had held on to it, it is a sin. And so sins we must repent of. For the Holy Spirit to move, for the Holy Spirit to flow, for the Holy Spirit to come and to move in our lives. And, and, and I think that this is the great paradox. Well, I didn't do anything. Yeah. It was them. They did it. But you held on to it. When Jesus Christ forgave you, you chose to hold on to that offense, that hurt. And led into sin and so we must uh, uh, repent humble ourselves and repent before god renounce that lord i repent mm. of this sin of offense that i've held on to but i have justified myself in just holding on to it lord i repent forgive me and lord i forgive the offender I release the offender and I pray for the offender right now and I bless them I ask Lord that you will bless them yes. well the Spirit of God can give you that grace yes. he can give you the there's grace enough in abundance in great measure for you to actually be able to pray that and mean it when you are actually blessing your offender, the offender, there's grace for that. But you must be willing. You must be willing and the Lord himself will provide for grace. And you will have that peace and you will have that joy flowing in your life. And that's what the devil hates. You know why? Thank you, Holy Spirit. The Bible says... The joy of the Lord is your strength. Think about this. If the joy of the Lord is our strength, so what do you think the devil's going to try and get? Your joy. Because if he gets your joy, you have no strength. So he wants that joy out. So one of his favorite weapons is offense. He sets it all up. Somebody hurts you, boom. Then the devil jumps on that and amplifies it 
And all of a sudden, you become bitter as you begin to mull over that thing. I cannot believe what she did. I cannot believe what he did. And you go on and you sleep on that. The sun now goes down on your anger. And you wake up the next morning and you're going over that and it's taking a root. Impossible for you to have the joy of the Lord. Sorry. The devil has cleverly set you up and you fell into his trap. So if you have been like that for years, it's never too late. It's never too late. We serve such a wonderful, gracious, merciful, loving, kind and wonderful and awesome God. And Jesus Christ is there with his arms outstretched. And he says, let it go. Let it go. Give it to me. Repent. And I would restore the joy of your salvation. Hallelujah. Wow, I'm blessed already. Yeah. I'm, I'm really glad that we're looking at this topic in such depth. Mm. Because um, I know that there's so much of this going on in the body of Christ today. And... It's, it's something the enemy has targeted because he knows that this is something that he can easily get us on. Absolutely. You know, you can be two friends walking together and the enemy comes in and causes an offense over the silliest things and destroy. That's right. And, um, and we're talking in, in the church. Yeah. In the church. You're going to the same church that person is going to but you're not speaking to them. In your heart, you resent them. And you call yourself a Christian. Mm. Now, we're all human, and we all suffer this. But once there is no more cloak yes. for our ignorance, because this teaching exposes that, and we have no more excuse. If after hearing this truth and you still decide not to deal with it you will quickly spiritually deteriorate hear me and hear me good in hearing this teaching mm -hmm. the light is revealed yeah. and the darkness is exposed concerning offense if you refuse to deal with it according to scripture and you are a born again Christian you will quickly very quickly yeah. begin to spiritually deteriorate it's going to open a greater door for the adversary against your life and what I see pastor is the enemy taking them out of their destiny taking people out of their destiny absolutely because he then says to you well here's a door here's another door and you're thinking, well, it looks good. It looks like God. And you think, because of the offense that's going on in your life, mm -hmm. you're blinded. Mm -hmm. you know? And so you go through that door, and it takes you out of the destiny mm -hmm. of God for your life. And mm -hmm. it, it's a real concern. My Lord, excuses, excuses. The enemy throws up excuses in our lives. Why we should not release. Why we should not deal with it. Yes. Excuses, 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 excuses. We've got to watch out for that. That is the devil. He is a liar and a deceiver. No longer entertain his works. It's the love of God that is appealing to you, that is reaching out uh, to you uh, to um, uh, uh, deal with that fence. Quickly, quickly deal with it now. And, 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 and the grace of God, the grace of God is there. But he will not invade your will. He will not. He says, choose. Choose ye this day. Choose. He says, I put blessings and cursing, life and death. Yes. But he says, choose life. Yes. And, and, and so uh, it, it's just us humbling ourselves. That's the biggest problem. Yeah. It's, it, it's to humble ourselves. Because as you said, the Lord gives us the decision he leaves his decision in our hands. Yes. But he's such a good father that he points us in the right direction. Mm. He says, choose life. Absolutely. Please, But ultimately, please. the decision is still in our hands. Yeah, yeah. And again, we are not making light of uh, anyone's misfortune, of whatever has happened to you that has caused uh, you to be offended and, and, 
and, and you've held to that offense. We're not making light of that. We are bigging up the cross. We are lifting up the cross, the cross of Calvary, what Jesus Christ did there for you and for me, that he bore everything. If nothing is outside of the cross that Christ did not bear. That's right. Nothing is too big for him. So regardless of perhaps the amount of years you may have held on to something, it hasn't gone, the Bible says, we're sin abound, the grace of God did much more abound. What does that, that means that grace is greater yes. than sin. Hallelujah. The grace of God much abounds greater. much greater than what level of depravity one has sunk because of offense. Mm -hmm. So don't let it eat you up anymore. Don't give the enemy any more room in your life because he's laughing. He's the one that is laughing. And um, a life is just going on for the one that caused the offense. Okay, Elizabeth. All right, now, so we're going to read from Proverbs chapter 18. Okay. And verse 19, which says, A brother offended is harder to win than a strong city. Wow. That is so true. Um, read that again. Look a at this. brother offended is harder to win than a strong city. Wow, so there is no feud as difficult to resolve as with a relative. No barriers are too hard to bring down. Hence, great care should be taken to avoid such conflict. And um, amongst relatives, things always happen amongst relatives, whether it's brother, sister, cousin, uncle, auntie, uh, parents, granddads, grandmas, um, uh, uh, th these things are very difficult at times, but, but not impossible because there is grace. Yeah. There is grace. And so, again, when it comes from a brother in the Lord, a sister in the Lord, um, it's harder to win that person, uh, the book of Proverbs says, than a strong city. We just got to make sure that we do our part if we were the one who caused the offense and we apologize to the person and if the person still doesn't want to receive it that's okay yeah. you you continue to pray for them yes, bless you. you have apologized profusely uh for causing that offense and and hurting that person and uh, if that person doesn't want to uh, receive that and then you just leave it to god and continue to pray for that one and pastor what about when it's not that you've offended somebody but somebody's just offended in because of you you know you know what i mean you haven't really offended anybody yeah yeah but somebody's just offended in you it's like jesus and john the baptist he hadn't done anything to john the baptist mm -hmm. but it seems that there was some offense that's why jesus had to say yeah because i think uh, the, the john the baptist was put in prison now and yeah. uh, he fought his cousin because the cousins he thought that jesus props would have come and visited him and being in prison um lonely place it's easy to get discouraged so you see the human side of john the baptist although he was the greatest prophet but he was a human being we are all our human beings and we have human emotions and uh, John the Baptist became discouraged in prison. And uh, Jesus knew that he was offended. And that's why John sent his disciples to go and find out, you know, is, is Jesus the one spoken of in the Bible? Although John got a revelation from God when he saw Jesus coming, he went, look, behold, look, the Lamb of God who take away the sin of the world. He knew this was the Messiah. But when John was arrested, thrown into prison and awaiting death, he probably knew there was going to be... Uh, you know, he became discouraged, and obviously Jesus Christ did not come and seek him, uh, and um, he, he sent his disciples, go and find out. So Jesus told his disciples, go and tell 
uh, John, the blind see, the deaf hear, the lame walk. Um, the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is, 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 he is, is, he not, offended is not offended. Who is not offended because of me. And, and, and uh, uh, that scripture is really powerful because persecution could happen exactly, yeah. as a result of our faith. People hurt us. People say unkind things that hurt our feelings whilst we are sharing the gospel. And so many people, my Lord, so many Christians who had had a zeal and a love for the Lord at the beginning, sharing the gospel, yeah. but because of someone's negative response to them, they were hurt and they stopped sharing the gospel. Well, because and, that is, and that's an account of Christ. Yeah. People become offended. Yeah. And, and um, as we mentioned last week with Paul and Silas, as an account of being a witness for Christ, they were beaten so badly and thrown into the inner prison, the Bible says, which is solitary confinement. And they could have been discouraged, uh, but they didn't. The Bible says at midnight, they began to sing songs and to begin to praise God. And all of a sudden, earthquake took place. God sent an earthquake that opened the prison doors. They stopped, set off their hands and their feet. And, um, and the prisoner, the prisoner, the jailer himself was uh, saved as a result of it and his entire household. Because when we, had they been offended, they would have missed that. Yeah. Had they been hurt, oh God, you know, why, 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 we're doing your will and now this happens. You see, people get offended with God because they can't understand certain things. They, they, they're limited in their spiritual sight to see the bigger picture Remember what the Bible says in Romans 8 and verse 28. And now we know that all things work together for good to those who love the Lord and are the called according to his purpose. And many people do not get to experience that because they become offended at God. And I was just thinking, looking at the broader picture, that's, I think that's the reason why God is stressing offense. Um, because offense doesn't just stop with a brother or mm. a sister. Yes. Um, if the enemy knows that he can get us in that area, then what's to stop it going on to the Lord? We're going, we're working for the Lord, we're doing such wonderful things, but we're encountering hardship. We're encountering wow, look at that. Times. And then we, the That's enemy good. says, the enemy turns and says to us, well, look at all you've done for God. Absolutely. You've given so much to the kingdom, you, you know, you've given your time, your money, your everything, and, and, and look at where you are. Look, look, look. And, um, that is so true. Let, let's just stick on that for a while because this has happened in the church. You, you get people that give yes. to the Lord. They, they give, they make sacrificial, and then all of a sudden they lose their job or something, mm. and they're in hardship, and they become bitter. Lord, I've been giving to you, and now I've lost my job. What, what, what has happened? They become offended at God. Instead of doing what the Bible says, Rejoice in the Lord. Why? Because God's got a plan. God has not abandoned you. God has not forsaken you. But we become angry at God, offended at God, and now we're missing our blessing. Because God is working something out behind the scene that you cannot see with your physical eyes. That's why the Bible says we walk by faith. Faith. In other words, it is well, even though hardship has come or at us, on us, as a result of whatever, uh, God is still working it out for your good. Don't get offended at God. Again, it's another ploy. It's another trick of Satan. Yes, he is. comes and accuses God to us. Look what you have done. Look how much you have sacrificed. And look what you got for it. Where is your God? You see how people get offended at God? And many Christians are offended at God. A loved one died that you were believing for mm. to be healed. Yes, and, and, and that person was not healed. The Lord okay. took them to glory. Yeah. Offended at God. And the devil is just rubbing his hands and says, yes, 
we have trapped another one. Yeah. We are destroying this person's destiny. But as long as you have life, breath in your body, there is still a chance. There is still hope. As long as you're breathing, there is still hope. God says, I will restore the years that the canker worm, the palmer worm, the locust, and the caterpillar has eaten. He says, I will restore. So yes. once we come to the place of repentance, Lord, I am sorry for uh, holding yes. you uh, uh, in offense in my heart because of my lack of understanding. And that's, that's what it is. Yes. We just lack understanding because the Bible says God's ways are not our ways. And as high as the heavens are above the earth, so are God's thoughts, thoughts above our thoughts. So when something happens, and we can't fathom it out. It's because we just lack understanding. And until God gives us understanding, we must understand that God is still sovereign. God is in control. But yes. when we don't look at that, we get mad with God. And so many Christians have got mad with God. Some has backslidden as a result yes. of and getting angry. And I, I just really want to, to challenge the church to really listen to what the Spirit of God is saying. Because the Spirit of God doesn't just say something for the sake of saying it. It's because the Lord knows, mm. and I really believe in this end time, this is going to be one of the major tools that Satan is going to be using against the church. Because when Christ speaks and said, Lord, about unity in the church, you know, if the enemy can divide us through offense, he's going to always go for it. And so we have to look out for things like this. A brother and a sister uh, that could have been walking together closely for the silliest thing offense comes in it separates it divides it causes you know conflict in the house of god mm. and and the enemy sits back just having a great time and so the, the spirit of god is warning us as a church warning his church deal with offense we must walk in forgiveness we must walk in releasing people daily these things might come but we must walk in, in, in that release and forgiveness because if we don't, then the enemy will always have that over yes. us. He will always have that. And so we just really want to, to speak this evening is that if you're hearing this word and you know the Spirit of God is convicting you in this area, surrender. Your feelings is not more important than your eternity. Mm. So think about that. Think about that and deal with it. Yes, we get upset because we're human. And, and God knows that will happen. But he tells us how we must deal with it. And so we must deal with it. We must. Mm -hmm. Keep praying for that person. Yeah. And God will give you the grace. Let's ask, Lord, give me grace. Okay. Give me grace to pray for this person who have hurt me. Uh, give me the grace, Lord. Just stay in that presence until you receive that grace it that grace will come and you say what is it, what does it look like what does it feel like the grace of god empowers you and enables you to do what you cannot do in your own human strength mm. grace to be able to pray for a person that you can't probably stand mm. you dislike because of what they've done it's the grace of God that would enable you to do that. But you must be willing, first of all. You must be willing. Willing is having a desire to do what you know is right. And when you are willing and you ask the Holy Spirit, then he will do the work of grace in you. And you will find yourself praying for those that you could not pray for. That's the grace of God. Um, this means that it is a lot easier to conquer or win a strong city than reconcile a brother who is offended. This is serious. Mm -hmm. We get offended by sometimes minor issues. An usher asks you to move from where you are sitting and you're not happy because you feel, how dare this person talk to me like that? And that happens in church. That's so common in church. <laughs> That's so common in church. And Usher asks, uh, can you please move here and can you please sit there because of one reason? 
and all of a sudden <laughs> we get upset and we don't get no blessing that Sunday. <laughs> we're, we're, we're there going through these spiritual uh, 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 emotions, hallelujah, amen, uh, but we are angry at the usher or at the person, again, that was sitting next to us and something happened. Watch out, the devil sets these things up. You feel someone walked past you in church and didn't greet you properly and you were offended. Oh, wow, that big one. Yeah. Pastor, you walk right past me. <laughs> I, I, I didn't see you. But you walk right past me and you went to that sister and you didn't shake my hand. You know, the devil uses all these things. And yeah. We've we got to be careful. Yeah. we really got to be careful um, uh, uh, to, to not uh, 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 see into things that's not really there. And I think that's it. That's it. <laughs> Seeing into things that are not really there. That's right. The devil just comes and just, oh, look what the pastor does. You know, he walked right past you. Yeah. Oh. You could have turned and said, oh, hi, pastor, or hi, sister so-and-so, or hi, brother so-and-so. But don't get offended and think, this person passes me every Sunday. Yes. Little things, but... Or maybe the pastor preached a sermon and you think he is referring to you and you get offended. That happens a lot. <laughs> the pastor's preaching at me and then you go on the phone and you, then you, you find someone that you can offload on to get them on your side and you begin to mouth and gossip the pastor, the pastor this, the pastor that, the pastor the other. All these things are wrong. Again, it's just Satan's tricks and devices that he has these demons running around in the church looking for a person and who are, is open to this stuff just to cause dissension and division. Don't, we are all targets, but don't become the bullseye. Yeah. Let me say that again. We are all targets by the devil, but we don't have to become the bullseye. In other words, the victim for Satan to manipulate yeah. to use us. We don't have to become that. So let's be aware of Satan's devices. Let's be aware of his tactics, how he maneuvers. It's all to divide and bring division. Because a church that is divided, it's not going to be powerful. The power of God cannot flow as he wants to. Well, the Jesus grace, the love it. of God cannot flow. Jesus said it. A house divided against itself can't stand. And so it is certain, it's Satan's aim to divide the lo a local church getting brethren not uh, agreeing with one another or loving one another, forgiving one another, division. And then we use our mouth to find people similar to us to gossip and mouth of the pastor or that brother or that sister. So common in the churches, so common. And, and, and you're watching me and you, you, you may be one of them that, that has done that. You know, you, you, you've been offended and, and, and you, you get, you know, there's a saying, birds of a feather yeah flock together so you look for people that you are able to influence yes and to begin a good gossiping about the pastor and, I, I, and just to say people need to be so careful because sometimes you're not even there but the enemy is looking for an opportunity to draw you into sin absolutely so you have somebody who's dissatisfied about something and they come and they say something to you and you innocently walk into the trap without realizing that you're walking into a trap. So it's always a good idea if people are coming to you complaining about a brother, complaining about a sister, complaining about a, a, a pastor, that you always point them back to the cross. Sister, brother, all I can say to you is that the word of God says this. Pray about it. Go before the Lord. Go and see the brother. Go and see the sister. Mm. But don't entertain it. Don't do it at all. Because it's, a, again, it's a trap that mm. Satan has masterminded for you to be ensnared in to block your blessing. He fears the anointing of God on your life. He fears the call of God on your life. And he doesn't want you to enter that call. So he's going to try and set you up with offense. My God. Wow. A pastor narrated how he finished preaching one day and a woman came to see him and said, 
I know you're referring to me in your message, but the pastor insisted that he wasn't even thinking about her. She was very upset. It will b be very difficult to preach if one has to avoid speaking about that certain things just because someone in the church has been through or going through a similar situation. Offense is dangerous and it can attract evil spirits into our lives. A man and his wife had a quarrel and there was some strife and offense between them and the Holy Spirit nudged the man to apologize to his wife but he refused and was being stubborn. As they were lying down, the man couldn't sleep and at about 2 a.m., the Holy Spirit spoke to him and said, look at what you have allowed into your house. And in an open vision, this man saw a large, fierce-looking demon spirit wearing armor. Wow. The man could see each piece of armor and understand its symbolic meaning. The spirit wore a helmet of pride, a breastplate of unrighteousness. He carried a sword of bitterness, a shield of hatred, from his belt hung a hammer of judgment, a cloak of deception, and his feet were shod with boots of anger. I guess if the Holy Spirit were to open our eyes so we can see the activity in the spiritual world when we hold on to offense, it would petrify us yeah. of the doors that we open to demonic activity in our lives, in our home, in our marriage, in our family. Uh, demonic activities through offense. And so uh, we have got to be resolved in our hearts that when offense happens, and it will yeah. happen, because it says it in the Bible, Okay, you can't just say, well, I don't receive that in the name of Jesus. You know, you get these people say, I don't receive that, I don't receive that. I thought, this is just foolishness. foolishness <laughs> the Bible says offense is come. going to happen. It will come. Okay, and so it, it, it will come, and uh, we, we just got to be resolved that, Lord, help me. Holy Spirit, help me to deal with offense scripturally, biblically. Yes. Help me to do what Jesus Christ would do. Help me to do what the apostles did. Give me the grace, Lord, so that I don't hold on to offense. And therefore, open a can of worms for demonic activity to be manipulating my life in other words i'm given legal right legal right to uh demonic ab activity against me because i am committing sin and not dealing with it according to the bible and sin always will always open a spiritual door for demonic activities unconfessed sin Why do we get offended? The reasons why we all get offended differ amongst different people, but there are certain common reasons or causes of offenses, irrespective of who you are or where you come from. Luke 17, verse 1 to 4. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Luke 17, verse 1 to 4. Luke 17, verses 1 to 4. Then he said to his disciples, It is impossible that no offense should come, but woe to him through whom they do come. It would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea than that he should offend one of these little ones. Take heed to yourselves. If your brother sins against you, rebuke him, and if he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times in a day, and seven times in a day returns to you saying, I repent, you shall forgive him. Right. 
So we've got to be very careful um, that we do not end up uh, offending uh, young ones in the Lord. Yes. And that happens again, it's another common thing that the devil used to drive out new converts from the church. Those who are supposed to be matured and seasoned in the Lord um, behave in an ungodly way, an attitude towards those who are young in the Lord, they're not yet matured, so they're going to be making mistakes and doing some things. And, and those of us who are uh, spiritual should be able to give good godly counsel, but I have seen uh, that those who are supposed to give godly counsel, those who are supposed to be matured, respond in a harsh and negative way, not in love. And therefore, they hurt that new convert. And that new convert says, hypocrites, and leave. The Bible says, if, if you are the one that's doing this, it will be better for you. And we explained, I think, was it last week or the week before, about a millstone? A millstone that was used to grind wheat. Okay, it was what uh, they put, uh, they removed uh, the... the, the uh, the, uh, the meal that uh, in, in Samson's time, and they got Samson to be moving this huge, going round and round to, to grind the, uh, 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 the, the wheat. <laughs> and so this is what Jesus says. It's better that one of those things is a place around your neck and thrown into the sea. What Jesus is actually saying, it would be better for you that you weren't even born. Mm. That you are going out of your way and you are hurting, harming those little ones, young ones in the Lord, who are new to Christ. You have no care, you have no grace, yes, yes. no grace. You're just curt, curt in your actions and how you behave. To a young one in the Lord, God says it's better for you that you weren't born. I mean, that, that's really strong. And again, Lord have mercy, how many young ones in the Lord has been lost back to the world mm -hmm. as a result of the attitude of Christians mm -hmm. who are supposed to be mature and well seasoned. Very, very powerful verse. Psalms 51 verse 5. Psalm 51 and verse 5. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity and in sin my mother conceived me. We daily encounter people carrying all kinds of experiences, traumas and fears of their past which greatly influence their behavior. Absolutely, yes. Okay. Romans chapter 7, and verses 15 to 20. For what I am doing, I do not understand. For what I will to do, that I do not practice. What I hate, that I do. If then I will do what I will not to do, I agree with the law that it is good. But now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. For I know that in me, that is, in my flesh, nothing good dwells. For the will is present with me, but how to perform what is good I do not find. For the good that I will to do, I do not do. But the evil I will not to do, that I practice. Now if I do what I will not to do, it is no longer I who do it but sin that dwells in me. Okay, so in every one of us, as we, we, we study this in, on, on the Tuesday, um, the message of the cross, in every person there is a human nature, a sin nature, mm -hmm. well, every born again Christian, a sin nature, and a divine nature of Christ. And um, here Paul is saying that in me, that's my flesh mm -hmm. nothing good nothing good in me 
a lot of Christians won't even agree with that statement. Mm -hmm. They just think they're so wonderful. And they mm -hmm. just love yeah. themselves, but in a negative, not in the biblical way, uh, they think more highly of themselves than they ought to because of their accomplishments, achievements. And, um, and Paul is saying, there is nothing good in us. We need God's grace every day to be more like Christ. We can't do that naturally. Mm. Uh, the, our human nature don't want that. That's why the Bible says the, the flesh wars against the spirit. Our human nature don't desire uh, God's ways. Yes. And so we have to have our minds renewed uh, by looking to the Lord and asking him uh, for his grace to be more like him. Lord, give me a desire to want the things of God, to do the things that are right according to scripture. Yes. Holy Spirit, give me that desire because it's not naturally in us. Because our human nature is a fallen nature. Mm -hmm. So we have to ask. That's what the Bible says. If anyone lack wisdom, let him ask. The wisdom of God, God's kind of wisdom, doesn't dwell in us naturally. We have to ask. So to be more like Christ, you can't do that in your human flesh. As we just read, in my flesh, there dwell no good thing. Mm -hmm. All right? So don't try and, and look to your own strength or your willpower, okay, to try and be like Christ. It's not going to happen. You're going to fail, all right? And so uh, you ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, he's there to help you. He's there to strengthen you. He's there to empower you, to make you more like Christ. That's one of his purpose in you to rid you of sin and to make you more like Christ. But you've got to be looking on to the Lord Jesus and asking him to help you uh, to do those things that will please him, to do those things that are right. Yes. And, and, and as you stay in his presence uh, and as you look to him, Lord, this air of my nature is so horrible. This air of my life is so terrible. Oh God, help me. The Bible says you will find him when you seek for him with all of your heart. Mm. He says he will be found of you. But we seek and then we stop. Yes. And we don't seek with all our hearts. So we never uh, come into the benefit of that grace flowing in our lives. Daily before God. Daily come before him. Lord, help me. Lord, help me to be like you. Lord, help me to do the right things. Lord, Lord, I want to. Yeah. But there is, as I see in the scriptures, there is nothing good in me that is of my flesh. That is able to help me to do the things of God. Yeah. But Lord, you have provided the Holy Spirit. Yes. He lives in me. He is my helper. And I look to you, Lord Jesus, in faith now because you have made the way for that grace to flow in my life. And this is where when offense begins to happen, it's just going to begin to repel. Why? Because the love of God is going to start filling you. Mm. You're going to start looking at people differently mm. who you couldn't stand before, who you dislike before. Even as a Christian, disliking people. Because human nature is fallen, depraved. When you realize there's nothing good in you and, and you're looking to Christ, then offense, you'll be dealing with it according to the Bible. And so this evening, so much the Holy Spirit has really brought out, you know, and I, I encourage you, please uh, try and watch the recording again. And... Um, it's for those who are new, look back at the message of the cross as well, as it will help us to know how to overcome. Absolutely, uh, absolutely. Um, it is there on our Facebook okay. straight away. You can watch it again um, for the YouTube. It takes some time to uh, to be uploaded uh, for you to watch it. But you know, the Bible says faith comes by hearing, hearing, and hearing by the word of God. To hear it again, hear it again. It, it depends how desperate you are for God. I mean, do you want to stay the way you are? 
Do you want to continue to be so sensitive and uh, uh, become offended all the time? Or are you going to realize, my God, I've been robbed by the devil yeah. time and time again. Yeah. I've been set up and fallen into his trap of offense. No more. No more. And so you're going to yeah. come before God on a daily basis. God, help me. God, help me. You're going to repent and renounce what you need to repent and renounce. And then the grace of God is going to start moving powerfully in your life. And, and you're going to see how much you've changed within uh, two weeks, three weeks. As, 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 as you get into the presence of God, you look back two months and you know you're not the same person. Because the grace of God has been working in you to make you more like Jesus. Heavenly Father, tonight, once again, we, we just want to thank you for showing up in the way that you have shown up by your spirit, Lord, to really expound in, in greater details tonight on the air of offense, destroying our destiny. Lord, again, we lift up all our viewers, all those who are viewing this live now, or will be watching the recording later on. Father, where you are addressing errors in their own lives, oh God, which perhaps they may have been in denial. Lord God, ducking and weaving and, 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 and just dodging the whole thing. Lord, I pray that you'll be on their case. I pray, oh God, that we may see this is your love and your grace that is chasing after us because Lord, you know what is around the corner. You know what is about to happen in a negative way that the enemy is going to do, that you are bringing this teaching up. Lord, I'm asking right now in the name of Jesus that the grace of God will begin to flow Amen. through this streaming right now. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will begin to arrest your people that has been holding on to offense, oh God, carrying offense in their hearts, mm -hmm. Lord, been in denial about offense. Holy Spirit of the living God, I pray for the power of God to mm -hmm. hit that person, oh God, and to bring complete deliverance, mm -hmm. every yoke of bondage uh, that the enemy has tied them up with, Lord, mm -hmm. over the years, oh God. I pray in the name of Jesus and I command those chains and those shackles and those fetters in Jesus' name to be broken in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray right now that your presence and your glory will come. Yes, Lord, Lord Jesus, set the captives free. Set yes. your people free, oh yes. God. Fill them with the joy yes. of the Lord that they, are, and that they are empowered, oh God, to begin to pray for their offenders. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we pray your blessing yes. upon every person watching and listening. At this time, Lord, and that strength, mm. strength will come to your people at mm. this time. Lord, we give you praise. Okay. Lord, we give you honor. Yes. Lord, we give you all the glory yes. and all the praise due to your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Mm. Amen. Mm. Thank you mm. for watching. And if this has been a blessing to you, Share, share, share uh, with somebody else, okay? And um, we'll be back again, uh, God willing, this coming Sunday at 11 a.m. for our Sunday service on the same platform uh, that you're watching, our Facebook, and as well as our uh, YouTube uh, account uh, as well. Uh, this coming Friday, uh, we're back again in Shepherd Bush at 7 no, 6, 6 p.m., uh, our uh, Shepherd Bush Outreach Evangelism. We are out in Shepherd Bush evangelizing, winning the lost at any cost. Yeah. And so we're there preaching the good news. And so if you'd like to come and join us and to be part of our outreach, please come and join us and, uh, and come and be blessed. God wants his church outside of the four walls. There's an urgency, an urgency for the church, God's people, to get out and tell others about him. God bless you, and we will see you. How to Give by Bank Transfer If you would like to set up a standing order, or make a direct payment to Tabernacle Christian Centre for your tithes or offering, please use the following details.
How to give by bank transfer. If you would like to set up a standing order or make a direct payment to Tabernacle Christian Centre for your tithes or offering, please use the following details. Account name, TCC. Account number, 87475871. Sort code, 600436. You can also give by going to our website and clicking on giving. From here, you can also use our details to set up the standing order or make a donation. Thank you and may God richly bless you. At Tabernacle School, we place Christ at the heart of learning, promoting Christian values and academic excellence, moulding young people to become active and productive members of society. Tabernacle School is home away from home, a safe and caring environment where students can thrive. We educate students aged 3 to 16 years, offering small class sizes and intakes throughout the year. For further information, visit www.tabernacleschool.co.uk or call us on 0207 602 6232.